Okay, El Sombrero, The Hat. I thought this was an interesting film, but, uh, well, okay, <laughs> you know what, I did like this movie, it was intriguing, it was slightly out there, I enjoyed the slower pace, the way it let things unfold, I enjoyed the subject matter that it was dealing with, it was quite macabre, and that was interesting, but you know what, I was somewhat confused at the end, I, I tried quite hard as well to come to terms with what the messages were. What was the symbolism, the philosophies that it may have been trying to suggest? I think there was actually a lot driving this production from Marino. I really do. I think it was all there in his head, behind the writing, behind the cinematography, uh, and the themes that he intended. But I think it suffered ultimately in the end by uh, not succinctly converging its ideas and its themes into something that was coherent enough. Let's take a look. Uh, the hat. Okay, this is the principal part of the film. It's the title, uh, it's a symbol within it, and it's brought up on several occasions. Therefore, it is supposed to be carrying a lot of the weight within the structure. On analysis, the film just props up all manner of Freudian-like possibilities with this relationship. And it bugged me that it was never really quite clear what the uh, relationship was between these two. You know, what kind of complex was we dealing with here? Did we have a uh, prostitute and client issue, a friend lover type thing, sex addict, drug addict, and then I think maybe at its most bizarre, which is where I'm going, daughter figure, father figure. Why? Well. He recalls the hat back to his mother and his father. It reminded him of his father. His mother lied to him about its origins, and now it seems he has a fixation with hats. And uh, you know he's getting this hooker to wear it while she strips off and you know has sex with him. Um, and then, of course, you call the film after it the hat. Well, what am I left to think? You know, when breaking it down, you're left with a very interesting idea. You've got a, a daughter, father, screw your mother complex behind this, uh, psychologically speaking. So, you know, let's look at what else there is. Uh, well, suicide. In his lamenting, he's slowly working his way towards suicide. The girl keeps asking, uh, why is the furniture disappearing? He's selling it before he kills himself. It's a planned suicide. But he doesn't tell her this. So what's deducible from that is that their relationship isn't actually that open. It's not that strong. So that harks back to the service client complex. Yet she brings up uh, escaping to Paris. Well, that clearly indicates that they have quite a strong relationship, bringing it back to the idea of a friend and lover complex. It's, it's all confusing. Let's go further. Um, the House of Cards. More cards in the bottom row. He's harking back to his upbringing. You have a greater structure with more cards placed at the beginning. Stronger roots, stronger foundation. It's irreparable regardless of what you have placed above that because you have to start from scratch in order to build higher. This is what he says, okay? This guy's clearly got some real issues with his upbringing, his childhood, his parents, you know, whatever. And uh, we have a coke addict and a hooker, basically. So broadly speaking, something did go wrong for these two card towers in the early days, right? Are they are they both going to commit suicide? Well, there's no indication that she is, but at the point she becomes aware as well, she's also quite supportive of him, which I don't think she would do unless it was a planned thing together. Apparently not a lot, but again, what are you really saying? What's life without mummy and daddy? Is that what you're trying to say? You know, dude, get over it. You're a grown man, your hooker friend, she's smoking hot and she seems as though she cares about you. Go to Paris with her, try the cuisine, visit the Louvre, fall in love and buy a beret or something, you know? Start afresh. See, sí. yeah. Still, anyway, above all of this, I did like the film. I really enjoyed it because it did make you think and there was uh, a puzzle to be solved in this and uh, you know, with these issues, perhaps I just didn't get it. Perhaps it wasn't clear to me. Uh, on production value-wise, excellent. The high-key cinematography is gorgeous. Very good practical use of digital film. The creamy look in the image, those nice clean blacks that you get. Very nice liberal use of negative space. You know, the composition in those early scenes was great. And all around, just very beautiful textures and a lovely color palette. 
The, the two actors, extremely engaging, very satisfying to observe them with their calmness, their reserved performances, you know, and they had good chemistry, I thought, on the screen. It all slotted perfectly with the long-running scenes. Uh, the sex scene, uh, pretty long, contributed absolutely nothing, but at least it was still able to involve a little bit of style along with the substance. So you still get your sex, you get your guns, you get your blues music, uh, but all still wrapped up in what was a very moody, macabre, and quite an intricate drama. So, very good. Keep making films, Marino, because I think there's a lot of potential there. Just try and tighten up the themes a little bit, but otherwise, I, uh, I take my hat off to you. Wow, that was a pun. Take my hat off to you, man. <laughs>